giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everybody in the fun universe, and welcome to the show where the tea is sweeter and the bots are hotter than the Florida sun. It's the it's the weak postponed Southeast Sweet Tea <laughs> Region show. Now to introduce ourselves, my name is John. I'm Brian. I'm Griffin. And I'm responsible for putting baby shark in your brain. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Now, tonight, we're going to take a trip together through all the states in our region here in the Southeast U.S. and try to highlight the top teams that we got a chance to see through the last two weeks of competition. And we want to try and put a positive light on the team's hard work that didn't get to compete as the season has been, of course, postponed. But before we get into all that, we have a special giveaway tonight for our live viewers from Analog Devices. Let's have our producer, Tyler, come on and tell us a little bit about that. Yep, we got a couple. If you're watching live, we'll have one more giveaway uh, during another show as well, too. But our friends at Analog Devices are uh, bringing back, once again, the ADIS 16470 IMU board uh, for your pleasure. Guys, it's off season now. I mean, I'm sorry, suspended season now. And uh, this is your opportunity to do some cool stuff, though. If you have a robot or if you just want to learn more about things, uh, check out things like this, like the, like the IMU boards. These can be fantastic for your team, can really help improve. And we're going to give one away from our friends at Analog Devices, keyword later on during the show. So good luck, everybody, with that. Enjoy the Sweet Tea Region Recap. All right. So to kick things off, I'm just going to go through a couple of the robots that I really took notice of in the Peachtree District. And I'm just going to start out with mine because it's easiest that way. Um, so my team is 1102 Making Magic. Um, we built ourselves a little uh, trench robot this year. Um, I was fairly adamant myself at the beginning of the year to, like, we got to build a tall robot. We don't have the right number of resources. But... Um, my kids really impressed me and we were able to come out and design ourselves a trench robot. Uh, we went with the highly complicated, but uh, had a, a really high ceiling of throughput uh, Spindexer design uh, and came up with a really low profile climber um, that climbed in sub two seconds uh, whenever we were hooked up onto the bar. It was really, uh, really cool to watch. Uh, and we put ourselves into a really good position for ranking points with a, a Skywalker design right at the top of our pole that really helped us seed first at Dalton uh, just a week or so ago. Moving forward from that, uh, Team 1771 North Gwinnett Robotics also had a, one of the more impressive robots I saw. Uh, for those of you who ever get to see 1771 in person, their like claim to fame is building a robot that's majority made out of wood, and it they that doesn't mean that it's not going to be one of the top bots at the event. Uh, they had a trench bot with a really capable autonomous, uh, high power port shooting, and a dual hook climbing system well, that was very consistent. They were uh, ranked second at Dalton, uh, right behind us. Um, Next, another really good team that I saw at Gainesville was 1746 Auto. Uh, Auto came out with another short robot. <laughs> you can see a theme that a lot of the top teams in Peachtree tried to follow. Uh, high power port capable, climb capable. I don't think it was where they wanted it to be. Um, they really weren't climbing as consistently as they should have been at Gainesville. However, by the end of the district, if we had been able to play it out, I bet Auto would have been the, one of the top tier teams to contend with. Um, then we move on to uh, 2974 Walton Robotics, probably one of the most consistent teams year in, year out that um, Peachtree has to offer. Another trench robot, <laughs> capable of the high power point. And whilst their climber wasn't consistent at first, they it worked when it mattered. They brought it out in playoffs and they climbed in almost every match in playoffs. 
Um, another trench autonomous. Actually, they were one of the only teams in Peachtree, if not the only team, to demonstrate those pathfinding autonomous programs where you can not only do the trench, but they had an enemy trench program as well. I saw some really interesting stuff out of them. It looks like their programming team has been doing a lot of hard work. Um, and then uh, another finally round out the uh, trench bot category. We got 4910 East Cobb Robotics. Um, they were also capable of power port, high power port. Uh, they had a really solid trench autonomous that worked from their very first match. Uh, the most consistent shooter at the Dalton event. And um, they had a, a unique double climber, and it didn't just pull them straight up. Uh, they had the ability to alternate which side they pulled in more. And I'm not sure most of the dual hook climbers that I saw could do that. And in one particular match that we played with them, it guaranteed us the ranking point because they were able to shift the weight of this, the generator switch bar enough that allowed our Skywalker to start rolling up the bar because we were just a little too far down on it. And uh, it was really awesome to get to play with them, both in the qual matches we did and in the playoff matches. And it would have been exciting to see in the coming weeks how they would have been able to improve their robot just that little bit more as well. Moving on from that, we had 4188, the dominant team uh, out down in Gainesville. They were the one of the few tall bots that really showed out uh, at Gainesville, capable of the high power port, had a trench auto right from the start, and they had a really fast and consistent elevator-based climbing system. Um, that blue and uh, green painting scheme that they love to paint their robots with really looks clean. Uh, and they're honestly a really good uh, group of people. Their kids are all awesome. I'm friends with some of their mentors as well. Uh, they're a really great uh, team. And then one more team I'd like to highlight from Peachtree, uh, 6919, the Commodores. <laughs> Last year they came out and surprised me with, they, with their number one seed ranking at Gainesville, and they came back and they did it one more time this year. Another tall robot capable of the high power point and climbing. It was really, really uh, good to see how consistent they were um, again this year. And I was interested to see how they would improve uh, moving forward into the competition season. So next, I want to move down to South Carolina, or up to South Carolina, I guess, uh, with 4451 Robots Garage. Uh, their robot, they built a climber and high goal shooter. Uh, I do not believe that cap robot was capable of going under the trench, uh, but it was a really solid robot. Um, Greenville and uh, Lawrence County really build some really solid students through those programs uh, in partnership with the Bosch facility up there. And uh, they were not as dominant at Palmetto as they typically are, but they were still very good. So uh, it was great to watch them. Um, another team, 281, the Green Villains uh, from Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, they were very fast at shooting from the safe zone and in front of the power port. Uh, really solid team for there. Uh, 343, Metal in Motion. They Sometimes it's kind of a coin flip, but this year I thought they had a really solid design concept. Uh, they went with a Spindexer as well. Uh, unfortunately, they had a lot more gremlins at Palmetto than I think they would have liked. They uh, weren't shooting quite as well as I would have expected, but who knows how the season would have went out for them. And then another uh, team, 342, right down from Charleston, one of our contributors. Uh, he helps us with content. Uh, they had a really uh, simple robot with the Mechanum drive and the shooting, and uh, they they had a weak start, you'd say, but they were picked up by the team that ended up making it all the way to the final. So they clearly know how to work with the experience that they have, and they built up a program that uh, can teach kids the right skills that they need to be successful in engineering. Uh, moving on down, uh, 1051, they had a pretty strong robot considering uh, their usual performance. You can see they've got uh, a high goal shooter, not a trench robot. A lot of South Carolina teams are actually keeping it simple. You can see they're using a lot more of those COTS parts, West Coast product style shooter there. Um, South Carolina teams are usually trying to reinvent the wheel for no reason, and it looks like this year they didn't uh, do that, and it, it it's Proving to pay off for them, which is really good to see. 
another couple of teams I wanted to let, highlight, 4075, the Robo Tigers from Conway. 2187, Team Volt. They were kind of slow, uh, but they were consistent, and consistency is what you need to be to be at the top of the game. And then uh, 1319, Flash. Um, they've had an off year or so, but I think they're starting to make a return back to their form, and we'll see what happens in the coming seasons if they uh, really make it back to the top of the Palmetto State. So, Marshall, who did you think was interesting up in North Carolina? Uh, well, to start things off, I got to start with 5511, a team that the, the team to beat, man. I mean, going 18 and 0 at the first event—that's something. So I, I got a hats off to them, I guess. Um, fantastic season for them. Uh, hopefully, we get a chance to see them again at some point soon. Um, after them, I got to mention 5160, the Chargers. Uh, definitely another team. A solid little everybot came out of the gate strong uh, and did really well uh, at the beginning. So I, I think they're another team to look at. Um, the next team I got to talk about is 1533 Triple Strange. So, uh, one stranger than Double Strange, I guess. Uh, they did great this season. And I think if you're going to talk about Triple Strange, you have to talk about, uh, the, uh, obvious pairing of 2655 to go along with them. So Platypi being another great team this season, and the two of those teams, uh, when they pair up, it's something else. So, And then uh, after that, I got to mention Team 6502, who had one of the best strategies, I thought, uh, at the early event. And I, I think they were an absolutely stellar team um, coming out of the gate, doing exceptionally well, making it into the finals. And I, I have a feeling... Uh, Another week or two, I, I don't even know what would have happened with these guys. So they were a very interesting team to look at, though. That's for certain. And then uh, my last mention isn't a team because of their robot, but because of their team, and that's 37-37. And these guys just knocked it out of the park with chairmans. Um, and I've heard repeatedly from others uh, in North Carolina that uh, they're one of those teams, and from talking to their mentors as well, they're one of those teams that's just absolutely stellar. Um, they had a great robot, but at the same time, I, I really got to hand it to them for their chairman's program and stepping it up this year. So absolutely uh, amazing work from them. And then uh, the last team I want to talk about is one that is near and dear to me uh, with a blinding robot, uh, my, my very own 900. Uh, I've been asked... Many times what a robot looks like. Uh, so I figured what I'd do is I'd first share you a, a, a great picture of it so you get the real experience of what it looks like to stand in front of it um, if you're an LRI. Um, <laughs> uh, if you're not an LRI, then uh, what you might be more interested in is what we've done on the software side this year. And this is actually some footage that you're seeing uh, from uh, a team out of uh, Minnesota, uh, 5172. Uh, they're awesome enough that they have a camera on their robot for a first-person point of view, but you're seeing it fed through the neural nets that have been developed by 900 students this year. And uh, you'll notice that we pick up on a lot of different things off of the field. And along with that on our robot, we get some depth data back, which is pretty exciting. So, And yeah, it's detecting blue robots, red robots, and game pieces and everything else, which is pretty freaking cool. So, but uh, it's just been an amazing season for us. And then I gotta actually reveal the robot to you, I guess, because um, that's what you all want to see. Because that's what everybody keeps asking me about. So there's the 900 robot. Uh, its name is Wally. So in all of its glory. It's a fitting name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so wow. So yeah, on to Brian to cover Florida. So. Uh, this is just a list of teams that I was able to go through and go on ahead and grab a bunch of information for here. Starting off on the list of teams that were definitely good to go and ready to compete this year. I'm going to give it to Team 108 Sigma Cats. They were a finalist at Palmetto. A trench bot with an interesting intake design that would go in and out of their... <clears throat> that would actually go like reach outward to suck the ball under and into their frame perimeter and a really interesting fold out climber that 
at first, when I first saw it at a Swamp Scrimmage, it looked like a um, it looked like a reverse four bar almost, and they were a really efficient score. Uh, On to a next team here. We're looking at team uh, forty sixty five Nerds of Prey, a really effective trench robot with an effective six ball auto from what they just showed me here today, and they also seem like a really nice contender here that would would have been the Orlando Regional. Um, next up, I have team 233, the pink team, a uh, trench robot with a nice turret, a slow ball shooter in comparison to the rest of Florida from what I've seen here, but a clever ability to hang from either the front or back of the robot using the uh, dual hooks uh, that John had mentioned earlier where they can move them independently. Um, Next team on to there, I have Team 1902 Exploding Bacon, the Hall of Fame team with something to prove. A rough season, but we're able to make it. Th- we're able to make an effective high goal robot that would just go up against the wall and just shoot their way with their payload out in just about a second. Um, they aren't a tre- they aren't a trench robot, so they would elect to go over the rendezvous point to get their hopper full, looking to score big and with uh, fast and consistent cycles. Climber was looking to be an effective climber that would also be able to climb on either side or in the center for uh, for balance. And the team definitely looked like it had a shot at being a top contender this year. On to our next team. We have Team 2383, the Ninjineers. This team had a snappy trench bot that seemed to have those 3D printed mechanum wheels working just right, like down to a science almost. These guys are definitely, were definitely going to be top contenders in competition season this year with their short, effective robot. And onto the top, we have Team 179, the Children of the Swamp, an effective high goal shooter that can also drive under the control panel with a shooter arm that can raise and close just like a gator's maw. They had a really interesting climb design that lends one to think of 2016 Swamp Things climb nearly closing up to the top of the tower. And um, sadly, don't have any visuals for them, but an honorable mention is uh, Team 8324 Miko. And uh, today, I was able to go through and pull up a quick top five for what was going on in Florida based on community voting. And, uh, oh, yep, there we go. That's team uh, 8324 Miko there. But starting off on our top five, we have team 108 Sigma Cat Robotics, finalist at Palmetto. We have team 180 Spam sitting at number four. Team 2383 The Ningineers sitting down at number three. Team 1902 Exploding Bacon at number two. And to no surprise, the number one team adv- team voted for is Team 179, the Children of the Swamp. Uh, that's what we got here for Florida. Uh, Chesapeake Hype Man, let's see what you got going over there. All right. So to run down, I, in my opinion, the top five teams that made a showing uh, at least got a chance to compete this or past the these past two weekends, 836 Robo Bees, though not as not like all that grand in Haymarket, they still proved very, very effective. And also right before week three and the suspension of the season, they released a video with an 11 ball auto. The only remember, one in the world. Like, seriously, an 11 ball auto. Like you, I don't think anybody was anywhere close to getting that, not even in California. Then uh, my second team on the list is 4472 Supernova, a consistent shooter and climber with the Skywalker mechanism. And honestly, in my opinion, probably would have gone very deep if they got it and possibly won district champs had they gotten any decent pick as their second pick. Then second on the list is 1086 Blue Cheese, who made a very, very strong showing with a few flaws at RVA, but double bannered. So it's just like, yeah, it's blue cheese back to their prime. Then fourth on my list is team 2106 junkyard dogs, who in my opinion has been the like best team to grow from like past few seasons. Like they are, this bot was so amazing. It was like compared to their past robots, like it was an elegant robot with a very, very good turret shooter. 
it was a little bit slow, but after talking to them, apparently they were only running at like 66% power in their shots. So imagine what they could have done at 100% power. And then at my fifth one is 2363 triple helix, of course, always at the top. And they they said that, or and from videos released that they were going to come with some new auto runs. So it was gonna, it would have been interesting to see if them and 836 had been able to team up at Portsmouth. They probably would have like been unstoppable had they been one and two. Then other notable mentions is 1599 circuitry, who was a railgun cannon, uh, which. T- had a tendency to shoot over the over the sh- over the fort but what was interesting about them was that their climber it was sort of a skywalker to where but it wasn't like a wheel on the thing it was uh, the hook but on a slide so that it would move their center of gravity so as in like it would just be a slight adjustment and it was often caught get them to balance and then 24 21 i have to mention because of the fact that out of their two events or out of i think that Currently, they're the only ones with two winner banners to come out of this season. Like, I don't know if anybody else was able to uh, copy that this season. And uh, another one, another one I need to talk about is 1895 Lambda Core, who is probably one of the most consistent bots I ever saw. Like, the thing is, they competed in week one and and then again in week two, and it was the exact same thing I saw. Very, very consistent. Probably would have plateaued at District Champs, but still, they would have been a good contender. All right. Well, next, we're going to cop- count down the top 10 teams voted in the FRC Top 25 poll for the season up to this point here in the Southeast region. But before we start, Tyler, what's the keyword for our giveaway for the analog devices going to be? Yeah, once again, we'll uh, draw for this uh, during uh, the break, guys. So if you are, are watching this, we're going to draw during the break. And for our second one here, it's just going to be IMU. Type in IMU right now, and that's your opportunity to win the uh, ADIS uh, IMU board from our friends at Analog Devices. Subs get five times luck. And uh, you do need to follow in order to win. So we'll draw during the break for that. All right. So counting it down, number 10, 4188 Columbus Space Program, winners at Peachtree Gainesville. At number 9, 1746 Auto from Cumming, Georgia, finalist at Peachtree Gainesville. 2363 Triple Helix at number 8 from Newport News, Virginia, finalist at Haymarket. At number 7, 1885, iLight Robotics, ranked 2 and chairman of Bethesda. At number 6, 1102, Making Magic, from Augusta, Georgia, ranked 1 and finalist at Dalton. At number 5, 4472, Supernova, from Woodbridge, Virginia, winners at Haymarket. At number 4, 1771, North Gwinnett Robotics, winners at Dalton. At number 3, 4910, East Cobb Robotics, from Marietta, Georgia, finalist at Dalton. At number two, 1086, Blue Cheese from Glen Allen, Virginia. Winners and chairmans at Richmond. And at number one, 2974, Walton Robotics from Marietta, Georgia. Winners and chairmans at Dalton. Well, everybody, that's all the time we've got for you tonight. But thanks for hanging out with us. And don't forget that fun needs your help to stay loud, live, and independent. Please consider giving us your support by joining Fun Nation with a subscription or bits here on Twitch, or by becoming a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now, or just by letting people know that this is the place to get first information in your life. Don't forget to check us out here on Disc- you're on Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or right here live on Twitch. If you're watching live, our next show is going to be Mouth of the South. On behalf of Marshall, Griffin, Brian, myself, and of course our producer, Tyler, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in, and thanks to all our moderators in the chat. Talk to you next week on the FRC Sweet Tea Region Recap. Way bye. Yay. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.